Amen. Hallelujah. I greet you all a blessed spring Sunday morning. And it is good to be together to worship the Lord and study His Word once again. Kumusta na po kayo mga kapatid? Well, today is the fourth Sunday of May. And we are still focusing on our monthly theme on women empowerment. Through the weeks, we have been looking at various women in the Bible and how God has showed His love and power through them. And so for today, we are going to take a look at another remarkable story of a certain woman in the Bible. But before we dive in, please join me first in prayer. Amen. Our most gracious and loving God, we glorify and give you honor for all that you have done and for all that you are going to do. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us once again. And today we thank you that we are able to partake of your word once again. As the deer pants for the water, so our soul longs for you, O Lord. So may you meet us. Refresh us and renew us with your message today. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah! Have you ever wondered why God positioned you where you are right now? Why are you positioned where you are? Why do you work where you work? Why do you live where you live? Why do you go to school where you go to school? Why do you go to church where you go to church? Bakit nga ba tayo nandito sa Toronto ngayon? O bakit nasa isang baryo sa Pilipinas ka nakatira ngayon? Bakit ka nagtatrabaho sa amo o kompanyang pinagtatrabahuan mo ngayon? O bakit ka dyan sa church na yan uma-attend? At bakit yung mga tao na yan sa paligid mo ang mga kaibigan at kabarakada mo sa ngayon? Have you ever wondered about that? Well, one clear answer that I know is that you do what you do and you are where you are because God has assigned you there for such a time as this. Ginagawa mo ang mga ginagawa mo ngayon at nariyan ka sa lugar na kinalalagyan mo ngayon dahil inassign ka ng Diyos dyan sa lugar na yan para sa mga panahong katulad nito. Our theme for today is For such a time as this. In Tagalog, para sa mga panahong katulad nito. For such a time as this, it may pertain to moments of crisis and disaster. There are times in our lives when tragic events happen, calamities strike, sickness and diseases, and even death attack. This COVID-19 pandemic is often described as the unprecedented times, meaning these are times that are unexpected and all of a sudden. Now, brothers and sisters, God has a message for us on how we should react and what we should do for such a time as this. And we will learn these valuable lessons from a life of a certain woman in the Bible. Yes, in the Bible, there was a woman whose bravery and sacrifice saved not only her family, but also her entire nation. This woman was no other than Esther. Her story was so remarkable that it is actually included as one of the books in the Old Testament. The book of Esther is comprised of 10 chapters. 
Now, surprisingly, the whole book of Esther does not mention God at all. However, the sovereignty and mystery of God's working power is in every page of the book. And so, what happened in the life of Esther? And what does the phrase, for such a time as this, really mean? Well, since the story is 10 chapters long and one whole book, it will be very long for us to read uh, the whole of it right now. And so I want us to watch this short video to give us a summary of the story. There once lived a young girl named Esther. She lived with her adopted father Mordecai in the city of Susa, and they were secretly Jews. Now at that time, the Jewish people were under the rule of the Persian king Xerxes, who, as it happened, needed a new wife. King Xerxes brought together all the most beautiful girls of the land so they could pick a new wife. And one of these beautiful girls was Esther. These girls went through days and days of beauty treatments, and in time, Esther became favoured by everyone, and she was selected to be queen. Mordecai, Esther's father, would walk around the palace gates hoping to hear from Esther. And on one day, he overheard a plot by two of the king's guards to kill King Xerxes. Nah, you do it. Mordecai told Esther what he had heard, and Esther told the king, who dealt with the problem. Even though Mordecai saved the king's life, he never received an award, and the king never knew what he did. Whoa. And then Mordecai found himself in trouble when a man named Haman rose to power. <laughs> Haman was second in command to Xerxes and would command all people to bow down to him. But Mordecai wouldn't, as he would only bow down to God. Haman was furious yeah. and began plans to kill Mordecai and all the Jews. <laughs> Haman created a law that all Jews must be killed, even the women and the children. So Mordecai went to Esther and begged her to speak to the king. But she was afraid, for if she visited the king without an invitation, she would be killed. But Esther responded to Mordecai asking everyone to pray for her and decided she would approach the king even if it meant death. Esther went to Xerxes and because he loved her, he asked what it is that she wanted to ask him. She said, if it pleases you, my lord, you and Haman are invited to a dinner I have prepared. Time came for the meal and at the end of the meal, the king asked Esther again what she wanted. She replied, come with Haman tomorrow to another banquet. Then I will answer your question about what I want. That night, the king couldn't sleep and decided to look through his book of records. He then discovered that it was Mordecai that had saved his life and decided to do something great for him. Haman arrived and the king asked him what would be a way of celebrating such a great man. Now Haman thought the king was talking about himself and suggested that a robe and a horse be provided for this great man to ride on. Perfect, said the king, and commanded Haman to arrange those things for Mordecai. Haman wasn't pleased. The next day came and it was time for Esther's second dinner feast. And at the end of the meal, King Xerxes yet again asked Esther what it was she wanted. She responded, if it pleases you, let me live. This is what I ask, and let my people live too. For Haman wishes to kill me and all other Jews. The king was furious and had Haman taken away, removing all his possessions and giving them to Mordecai, giving him the position of second in command. Ooh, a hurt. The king wrote a new law for God's people, and Esther and Mordecai lived their life serving the king. Amen, amen. So that was the beautiful story of Esther who saved the entire race of Jews from annihilation or from being wiped out on the face of the earth. Now, I just want to point out again these two specific verses which are found in Esther chapter 4 verse 13 to 14. And this is going to be our main text for today. It says there, Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you are in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time 
just as this. Now, going back to the story, after Haman was able to convince the king to execute all the Jews, Mordecai told Esther to do something about it and to tell the king that she is actually a Jew. Now, Esther refused because if she will speak to the king without being summoned, she could die. Ang patakaran kasi ng hari ay walang pwedeng pumasok sa kanyang trono o sa kanyang courtroom nang walang imbitasyon kahit sino pa yon. Lahat ng magpapakita sa hari ng unexpected ay papatayin maging sino ka man kahit yung reyna pa yon. So at this point, Mordecai rebuked Esther and told her, Don't you think that the reason why you were made as queen is exactly for such For such a time as this? Hindi kaya, kaya ka na ilukluk na reyna ay para sa mga panahong katulad nito? So Esther was being rebuked and scolded for being self-indulgent and for having a self-preserving mindset. Pinagsabihan siya dahil sarili lang niya ang kanyang iniisip. Mordecai reproved Esther for focusing into selfies rather than focusing into service. He reminded her that she had been chosen as queen to set her own interests aside, let go of her own ambitions, and face an enemy full on. She needs to risk her life and her legacy with no guarantees of a positive outcome. Kailangan niyang ipusta ang kanyang buhay ng walang kasiguruhang positibong resulta and that was the challenge that Esther had to accept. Now, brothers and sisters, just like Esther, you and me are also set up by God For such a time as this. Dumarating ang mga panahon na pinapakita ng Diyos ang dahilan kung bakit ka nariyan sa kinalalagyan mo sa ngayon. You see, you were married to your wife or to your husband for such a time as this. You were assigned in that destination In that position, in that office, in that job, for such a time as this. You were appointed and ordained to that ministry for such a time as this. So kailangan mong makita kapatid at maintindihan ang plano at purpose ng Diyos para sa buhay mo. In everything, there is a reason. And you need to have that aha moment when you will say, Oh, now I understand why I am in this position. It is for such a time as this. Amen? Alam niyo po, maraming beses ko nang napatunayan ito sa aking buhay. One remarkable thing in my life is that back in college, I was given the opportunity to join one of UP Diliman's prestigious choirs, which is the UP Singing Ambassadors. Hindi po basta-basta ang makapasok at makatagal sa choir na ito. So I was exposed to rigorous training and musical discipline. Little did I know, that this background and experience led me to be the conductor of the Urdaneta City University Music Ensemble. So, ako po yung nagkoconduct ng choir ng university, I mean, Urdaneta City University. And then after that, I was given a chance to conduct the Urdaneta City Municipal Choir. At a very young age, in my 20s, 
Nahawakan ko po ang mga matataas na opisyal ng munisipyo at sumusunod po sila sa akin. Now only to realize that these were all preparation for me to be a conductor and head pastor of a local church here in Toronto, Canada. And I give glory to God for that. Mga kapatid, alam niyo po, hindi po madali at biro ang magpastor, lalo na sa abroad, na ang lahat ng tao ay abala sa pagkayod ng ibubuhay, hindi lang para sa pamilya dito, kundi pati ng naiwang pamilya sa Pilipinas. Now, especially with this pandemic and lockdown, it is a total turning point of events. Total change of how to handle an online and virtual church wherein communication, media, and technology are the key, uh, major keys, the key ingredient in order to operate. Alam niyo po, mas maraming oras actually at pagod ang nauubos kapag hindi nakakapagtipon-tipon ng face-to-face -face para lang masigurong ang espiritual na kalusugan ng mga kapatiran ay malusog pa rin. But you know what? Praise the Lord. Because He has prepared and assembled everything and every person beautifully for such a time as this. Hallelujah! God has brought different people from different places with different talents and abilities to merge together and support and help one another in order to rise and be victorious for such a time as this. Hallelujah! Yes, I'm talking about you, Haven of Worship family. There is a reason why God has put you in our church and not somewhere else. You have an important part to play in the body of Christ. No one else can perform the unique spiritual gift that God has given except you. And you need to use that gift, especially for a time such as this. Amen. God has given each of us a job, a position. God has given us resources, the education, the skills, and many more. God has opened opportunities to optimize His kingdom purposes. You see, He did not place you or me where we are so that we could just party or go to places all day long and post pictures on social media. God has placed us wherever we are because we are in the midst of a battle. We are in the middle of a war. Mga kapatid, ang dahilan po kung bakit tayo nasa mga destinasyong kinalalagyan natin ngayon ay dahil tayo ay nasa gitna ng matindi at seryosong gera. A battle between good and evil. A battle between life and death. Even a battle that is not of the flesh but of principalities and schemes of the devil. And so, church, to miss a kingdom assignment because we have become too caught up in our personal kingdom is one of the greatest tragedies we could ever face. Ang masaklap na trahedya, mga kapatid, ay yung kinaliligtaan natin ang assignment na itinalaga sa atin ng Diyos para ipagtanggol ang kanyang kaharian dahil lang inaatupag lamang natin ay ang mga pansarili lamang nating mga interes. Now back in our story, an entire nation became thankful for how Esther responded to Mordecai's rebuke. Their lives were spared. So church, how many souls can be spared in the time where we live today if we will choose to step up to service even if it involves sacrifice? 
So learning from the life of Esther, what did she do? And what lessons can we learn from here? Number one, she listened to advice. She listened to advice. You see, after Mordecai rebuked her self-indulgence, she accepted the challenge to face and talk to the king. Yes, church, there is a reason why you are surrounded by the people around you. These people were sent by God in your life to give you godly and sound advice. Isi na ulila man sa ama at ina si Esther, subalit ang kanyang pinsan na si Mordecai, na itinalaga ng Diyos na nagpalaki sa kanya, ay hindi nagkulang ng pagpayo at pangaral sa kanya, maging noong siya ay naging reyna na. You see, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8 says, My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. Children, you see, you were assigned to your parents and your guardians so that you will listen to them. Do not despise the teachings and advice of your parents because these are for your own good. Now, this does not only pertain to your biological parents, but this also pertains to your spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. Spiritual children, listen to your leaders and to your mentors. Heed to their teachings and instructions. Magpasako po tayo mga kapatid. There is a reason why we or you are placed under their supervision and leadership. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now what else did Esther do in order to gain victory in such a time as this? Number two, she asked, for prayer, fasting, and intercession. Amen. Let's read on in Esther chapter 4 verse 16. It says there, Go, this was Esther talking. She said, Go and gather all of the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. You see, Church Esther knew that in order to win the challenge, she needs prayer, fasting, and intercession. Since all of the lives of the Jews were at stake, therefore it is needed that all members of the Jewish community needed to cooperate. Church, there is power in fasting and praying. Amen. When we deny our bodies with its desire to eat and consume, when we concentrate to God in our pleas, and supplications, it grabs God's attention. But notice, church, that this requires unity and solidarity. Kailangan united at solid ang lahat, mga kapatid. The entire Jewish race needed to gather all together and fast all together. You see, napakahalaga po mga kapatid ng pagkakaisa ng lahat ay nakikisama, nakikipag-cooperate, nakikipagtulungan. Our battle is not a one-man job. We all need to fight into the battle. We are all in this together. One for all and all for one. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, finally, what else did Esther do in order to gain victory in such a time as this? 
Number three, she faced the battle boldly. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, Esther said, let, let the whole Jewish race pray and fast for me. And I and my maidens will do as well. Ako din at ang mga kasama ko, mga alalay ko, magpa-fasting din. And even if it is against the law, I will go and see the king. If I shall die, then so be it. Mamatay kung mamatay, pero haharapin ko ang laban ng buong tapang. Amen! Yan ang mga kataga ni Esther. Hallelujah! You see, church, there are many verses in the Bible that encourages us to be bold and to be strong. Many verses in the Bible that tells us to fear not because the Lord is with us. To not worry because we are His children and He is our good Father. Amen. So do not worry, church. And all the more, do not quit. Do not give up. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Do not be tired of doing what is good. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So church, once again, there is a reason why God has placed you where you are right now. You do what you do and you are where you are because God has assigned you there. For such a time as this. Amen. Sa mga krisis na katulad ng pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, kailangan ka ng pamilya mo, kapatid. As the husband, as the father and man of the house, your family needs your strength. So be a man and stand up for your family. As the wife, the mother or grandmother and caretaker of the home. Your family needs your care for such a time as this. So be a woman of faith, of patience, and of love. Amen. Beloved children, mga anak, you who are of the next generation, your family needs your support and cooperation for such a a time as this. Listen to your parents and cooperate and unite with them for this is the will of God. Amen ba mga kapatid? So church, stand strong and be diligent in your jobs and in your schooling. God is preparing you, all of you, to launch you into greater heights. So be faithful and be excellent in all of the work and assignments that are placed on your shoulders. Hallelujah! When you see the moment that will arise that your service is needed, do not just think about the benefit of yourself, but all the more think of the benefit of others. Church, our lives are not our own. We are God's workmanship in order to do good works for His pleasure, especially for such a time as this. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us all bow down our heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the breaking of your word. Thank you for reminding us that you have orchestrated everything under your plan. That everything happens for a purpose and for a reason, O oh Lord. God, we ask you to help us to arise when moments of crisis comes. Help us to listen to godly advices. And all the more to seek your advice, O oh Lord. 
Help us to cooperate in unity and solidarity. To lift each other up in our prayers and intercessions. To fast and to pray, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow you. Father, help us to face our battles boldly and to trust that you are always one step ahead of us and that you have already laid the path in which we are today. Panginoon, itinataas ko po sa inyo ang aking mga kapatiran na sa mga panahong ito ay dumaranas ng iba't ibang mga krisis sa kanilang mga buhay. Maaaring ito ay karamdaman sa kanilang mga katawan mga material na ba ang nailangan o kabigatan ng kalooban, Panginoon, pagalingin mo po sila sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. I pray for your holy touch, O God, to be upon my brethren who are suffering with different forms of crisis and circumstances in the name of Jesus. Let their situations be straightened up, O Lord, by the power of your name. We pray thee in Jesus' name. And Lord, even as we face once again this brand new week in our lives, we pray, O oh Lord, for the victory in every battle that we are about to face. Just as you have shown your faithfulness in our past and in our present, we trust in your faithfulness for our future, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. And so, oh God, be thou our vision. Continue to show us your ways that we may continue to walk in you, O oh Lord. We lift you up, O oh God, in our praises. We give you all the honor, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. This we pray in the most precious name, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we say Amen and Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So this now ends our service. Thank you all once again for tuning in. If you are blessed, please don't hesitate to share the word so that others too may be blessed. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen.